way back when, and I do mean way back, at least when it comes to electric vehicles, it was impossible to go anywhere in central London without encountering a tiny four-seat electric car known as the G-Wiz. Rising in popularity in central London after the introduction of the congestion charging zone, which charged private drivers of petrol and diesel cars a daily fee to drive on the roads of central London, the G-Wiz was many a Brit's first and sometimes only experience with an electric car. Because it was electric and electric cars were exempt from congestion charging, many middle-class Londoners and many who commuted into central London for work, forgave the car's tiny dimensions, poor performance, and high sticker price just so that they could drive through London without having to worry about paying extra fees for the privilege. And so it was for many years. G-Wiz cars, which were actually a rebadged version of the Riva electric car developed for the Indian market, became the butt of jokes in the UK thanks to their tiny, toy-like appearance, slow top speed and limited range. And while the slow top speed and limited range was partly down to the car's original battery technology, lead acid, which was in turn influenced by the desire to keep sticker prices low, it was also to allow the car to be sold in Europe as a heavy quadricycle, a type of low-speed neighborhood electric vehicle that's far easier to get through crash testing than a full-size highway-capable car. In short, they were everything that modern electric cars hope not to be. Of course, when more capable cars like the Nissan Leaf appeared on the market, sales of the G-Wiz plummeted. And while Reva and its new parent company, Mahindra, tried to bring a newer, more tech-filled version of the car to market in the form of the Reva E20, the sticker price and bad reputation of the brand not to mention its limited top speed, meant that very few customers wanted to buy one. And so, a few weeks ago, when no one was even noticing, Mahindra officially withdrew the spiritual child of the G-Wiz from sale in the UK, deciding instead to focus in its home market of India. So far, the Mahindra E20 and the E20 Plus seem to be doing just fine in India, where there's some significant difference in regulations and expectations when it comes to what a car is. Focusing on the car's onboard tech and fully connected system, the domestic ads for the funky four-seat electric car are bright, energetic, and compelling. But in the UK, elsewhere in the world, low-speed electric cars just aren't selling. Alongside one of the first Reavers to enter into the UK, which I rescued from certain death in exchange for paying its roadworthiness test, its MOT, I've owned several small low-speed electric cars, including the City L Runabout and more recently, the Renault Twizy ZE. Of those three cars, only the Twizy really felt like it was built for modern roads, and even then, it was built to satisfy the same legal framework that meant it wasn't treated like a full-size car. To its credit, of course, it had an airbag and at least used modern drivetrain and battery technology. But outside of the ultra-cramped cities where owning a not-quite-a-car makes sense, believe me, you've not realized how fun and carefree it is to own a Twizy until you've squeezed through some tight gaps and found a parking space most cars wouldn't even notice, limited speed small electric vehicles don't make sense in a whole lot of places. That is, if you're looking at personal ownership. Fleet vehicles and car sharing services, however, well, they're different. For example, take the Scoot scooter sharing service in San Francisco, which recently added some Nissan rebadged Renault Twizzies to its fleet, limited to just 25 miles per hour due to local regulations. Their diminutive size and cheap running costs make them ideal for those who need to run an errand around San Francisco but don't want to or can't take public transit. And there are plenty of cities around the world where a similar scheme could really help traffic flow, reduce congestion, and of course, pollution too. But the attitude towards small, low-speed electric cars is so poor these days thanks G-Wiz and popular whipping boy of Top Gear, that I don't think we're ever going to see low-speed electric car-based vehicles gain popularity ever again. Sure, there are services already in operation in certain cities around the world which make use of just such a vehicle. But even in countries like China, where low-speed electric vehicles were once considered an acceptable form of transport, the stigma attached to low-speed EVs is just too great to overcome in many cases. Except, perhaps, in one saving chance, autonomous vehicles. If you're not doing the driving and you're just a passenger, low-speed electric vehicles could yet again have their day. But only if we're talking about fully autonomous vehicles that are quite clearly not cars, nor attempting to be. 
Take the pod-like car that Waymo has been using for several years to test fully autonomous vehicles. It's different enough from a regular car to be fun, new and exciting. But if it had a steering wheel, regular controls and was just as slow and underpowered as these cars I've mentioned before, well, it wouldn't be very different. Are low-speed electric vehicles doomed? Is there a future for them in outside of tightly packed European cities or as transportation solutions for countries with less strict crash test requirements? And what sort of roles could they encounter moving forwards? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this, why not contribute to our running costs via Patreon? I've left a link below and at the end of the video. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow. And until then, keep evolving. Music